Welcome to From Shelves to the Shores, brought to you by the Choctahatchee Basin Alliance and AmeriCorps Northwest Florida Environmental Stewards. Hello explorers and welcome to your first lesson of From Shelves to the Shores. My name is Amanda Bryant and I am the Education Coordinator of the Choctahatchee Basin Alliance. Today I'm going to be teaching you about this awesome grass called smooth cord grass. Can you say that with me? Smooth cord grass. Very good. As you can see, we have a lot of smooth cord grass growing at our office over here at CBA. There are three main reasons why this grass is so important. CBA and our partners, AmeriCorps, grow this grass to use for restoration in the Choctahatchee Bay. It is very important for, like I said, three reasons. It creates a habitat for small critters like crabs, shrimp, juvenile fish. It also has really strong roots and helps prevent erosion. You can see how these roots are holding on to that soil. The Choctahatchee Bay has a lot of waves. So if we didn't have these strong roots holding on to that soil, it could just get washed away. These plants also help filter and absorb pollution from stormwater runoff. We brought a small nursery and some grasses to your library so that you can help us take care of them for the next four weeks. So to know how to take care of them, you need to know what plants need to survive. The first thing is space. So your nursery gives your grasses plenty of space and each grass has its own pot, so it has its own space to grow in. The next thing plants need is nutrients, and they will get that from the soil that's in their pot that they're growing in. Another thing they need is sunlight, and they're outside, so they are naturally going to get sunlight. Another thing they need is water. It might rain while they're there, so that will naturally give them water. But if there's not enough rain, you can give it more water from the hose. Another thing plants need is air. Well, once again, they're outside and air is all around them. Our smooth cord grass lives in the Choctahatchee Bay in what's known as a salt marsh. And by the name, you might guess, it doesn't actually have fresh water it has a special kind of water called brackish. Brackish water is made up of fresh water and salt water. Fresh water comes from the Choctahatchee River and creeks like Turkey Creek and Alaqua Creek and even rain. Our salt water comes from the Gulf of Mexico through the Destin Pass over by Crab Island. When mixed together, it's known as brackish water. We can't tell these waters apart, so we need a special tool to do that. To make our nurseries brackish, we just add some pool salt. But remember, we can't tell if there's enough salt in the water by just looking at it. So we use a special tool called a refractometer. Basically, we use our pipette we collect some water from the nursery. We open this right here. We put two, maybe three drops on the screen. Then we gently close it, make sure the water gets nice and spread out on that slide. And then we look through it and we point it towards the sun so that the light shines through. When we do that, we'll see a stream that looks like this. Where the blue meets the white is our salinity, or amount of salt, reading. We look at the numbers on the right when looking in the refractometer. In this picture, the blue meets the white at zero. If the reading is zero to 0 0.5, then there is no salt in the water, which means it is fresh water. For this picture, the blue and the white are meeting at 15, 
which means it is brackish. Brackish water can be anywhere from 0 0.5 to 30. So this nursery actually is at zero. So what do we need to do? We need to add some salt. So basically, we just take salt, add it to the nursery, and we stir it with our hands, make sure it dissolves. After we add salt, we can take another reading with our refractometer to see if it's between 10 and 20 PPT. That's where we want to keep our nursery. Ask your library when you can come and help check the salinity of your nursery. Let's do an experiment and find out if plants can breathe. Plants are living things just like you and me. And like we said before, plants need air to survive. But you normally can't see plants breathing. So we're going to do an experiment so that we can actually see it. What you need for this experiment is a container of lukewarm water. It'll work very well if your container is clear just so you can see um, all around it. Then what you can do is you can collect one leaf or like I did, a couple of leaves. You want to make sure you're getting them directly off the tree or the plant uh, because we want the, to make sure that the leaves are active and still breathing. And all you're going to do, oh, and don't forget, get a couple of rocks or one rock to help make sure these leaves stay submerged in the water. So we're just going to place these leaves in the water Put our little rock that I found outside on top to make sure it stays underneath the water the whole time. Now we're going to leave these leaves out in the sun for a few hours. If you need to leave them inside, make sure it's a very sunny spot. We will come back later to see what happens. It's been a few hours since we put our leaves in the water. I removed them from the sun and put them in the shade just so we can see a little bit better. Let's take a close look and see what happened. To understand what we're seeing, I want you to imagine what would happen if you held your breath, went underwater in a pool, and then let your breath out. You would see bubbles. That's what we're seeing here. As the leaf uses the sunlight to create energy in a process called photosynthesis, it needs to get rid of the items it no longer needs, like extra oxygen. With the leaf being underwater, we see this released oxygen as bubbles. Do plants breathe the same way that we do? No, they do not have lungs. What they do is take in air through their stomata, which are little holes so small you cannot see them. Another difference is that we take in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide and then release oxygen. Can you believe that right now you are seeing the invisible? You can adopt one of our grasses at your library. All you have to do is go to the library and ask about the plant adoption. They will give you a sign for you to make. It will look just like this. There are many colors you can choose from. You will pick a name for your plant. It can be whatever you would like it to be. They will write the plant's name in a sharpie and then your name right underneath it. And then to make it a sign, they will take a piece of duct tape and a popsicle stick and just tape it to the back. You then can go out to our nursery and stick it in one of the grasses of your choosing. And that will be your plant that you can keep an eye on for the next four weeks. They will also give you a certificate of adoption. You will write in your plant's name and it was hereby adopted by your name and then you can sign it. Then you can take this home and post it on your wall to rem remind you of the plant that you adopted. 
For our craft today, I hope you went by the library and picked up your supplies. It'll look something like this. So today we are going to make a plant. We talked about what plants need, so we're going to include that in our picture, and we're going to include all the parts of a plant. So you can go ahead and take off your paper clip. Now you should have a pipe cleaner. Your pipe cleaner will be either brown or green. You'll have a cotton ball. You'll have a little piece of twine. You'll have a little square of blue construction paper, a rectangle of yellow construction paper, a brown rectangle of construction paper, You'll have a square of some fun color. That'll be for the flower petals. It could be a variety of colors. You'll have a square of green construction paper and you'll have a big rectangle of either this dark blue or the light blue. Some of the supplies that you will need from home is some glue, some scissors, a pen or a marker and some tape. We're going to start off with our big blue rectangle. This is going to represent our space and our air for our plants. That's where our plants going to grow and breathe. Now the first thing we'll want to take is our brown. What do you think this is going to represent? The soil. So, so we're going to decide where to put it on our page. I'm gonna put mine on this side. All right. So we're gonna put some glue on one side of the brown. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, but we wanna make sure we get at least a little bit all over that brown and then we're going to place it at the bottom of our blue. So now it looks like we have a sky and we have the ground where the soil is. All right. So what we can also do is we can label. We're going to label our brown Soil, that is spell, S-O-I-L. We can also label anywhere we want in the blue, space, S-P-A-C-E, and air, A-I-R. That way we know what everything is representing. Next, Remember, we said sunlight. So, we're going to take our yellow sheet of paper. Now, this is important. We're going to use this sheet for a few things. So, we don't want to just start cutting in the very middle. Let's cut off to the side. I'm going to trace out my sun. So, I'm going to draw just a big circle that's going to be my sun. To make sure I have, this is for later, but to make sure I have space, I'm going to draw a small circle that's going to be the middle of our flower. Then we can also trace out some sun rays. Remember, they're just going to be long and skinny. For now, I'm just going to trace the one, but you can trace multiples. So then we're going to cut it out. Try your best to cut along your line, but remember, it doesn't need to be perfect. And it can be really any shape that you want. So if you want it to be an oval, if you want to get creative with the shape of your sun. And you can see, you can see some of my pen. So this is going to be the side I put glue on. That way you can't see the pen once it's glued down. I'm going to glue it on my sheet of paper 
with space to put some sun rays. Now I'm going to cut out several sun rays. You can make your sun rays any size or shape that you want. I did not even trace mine. I'm just cutting them out. Make as many or as few as you would like. Just remember, as you are gluing them on your paper, to leave space for your plant. There's my sun. Let's go ahead and label it. Sun is spelled S-U-N. Now we also need some water. Where does rain come from? They come from clouds. So we're gonna take our cotton ball and we're gonna kind of pull it apart a little bit because we want our cloud to be big and fluffy. That looks pretty good. It might get stuck on your fingers if you have glue on there, but that's okay. You can kind of rub them together to get it off. All right. And I'm actually just going to put glue on my paper and put my cotton ball right on top of the glue. Just like that. Now we're going to use your small blue square to make some raindrops. Once again, you can trace them out or you can just go ahead and cut them. They can be whatever shape you want. I'm gonna make it look as much like a raindrop as I can. And this just needs the tiniest bit of glue. Now I'm just going to do another one. Once again, we're getting glue on our fingers but it's fun to get off. All right, you can do as many raindrops as you want. And I'm just going to do those three right there. So let's label this. This is water. W-A-T-E-R. All right, well now we have everything a plant needs. Now we need our plants. So we are going to take our twine and we're going to cut it in half. Doesn't have to be exactly half, but close to it. Then we're going to take our pipe cleaner and we're going to tie our twine at, at one end of that pipe cleaner. You might want your parents' help for this. We want it to be close to the bottom. We're just gonna tie one simple knot. Doesn't have to be even. We can have, these are representing our roots. So we have one long root and one shorter root. We need a few more roots. So we're gonna tie this other twine to the bottom as well. Now we have some roots coming out of our stem of the plant. So we're going to put our roots in the soil. Look, see how big our plant is? We're gonna cut our stem a little bit. Yours might be as big as you want, but if you wanna make it smaller, just cut it off. All right. We're gonna have our roots hanging off the sheet of paper a little bit, that's all right. So the pipe cleaners can be really hard to glue. So I'm actually going to use tape. 
You can glue yours if you would like, or you can do like me. I'm just gonna take one piece of tape, tape it down there to keep it in place. All right, now we have our roots, we have our stem. What else does a plant need? How about some leaves? That is what our green sheet of paper is for. So once again, you can trace out your leaves and you can make as many leaves as you want. I'm just going to do two and I'm going to do um, what's a typical plant leaf, kind of an oval shape. I'm going to do two of them. So now we can cut them out. And you guessed it, we will be gluing these down also. Remember, get creative with your leaf shape. There's so many different plants with so many different leaf shapes, and we're not making our particular type of plant. We're just being creative. Once again, you can put the glue on the side that has a little bit of pin. And you just want it to be coming out of your pipe cleaner. Just wherever you would like it to be coming out. Mine looks a little bit like this. All right. Now we're going to go back to our yellow. Remember that little yellow circle? We're gonna cut that out. That's going to be the center of our flower where the seeds are. Just put a little bit of glue. We're gonna put that right above our stem. Now we're going to use our colorful piece of paper and we're going to make petals. Just like the leaves, you can make your petals any shape you want. You can trace them out. I'm just gonna cut mine out. I'm just going to make little ovals for petals. You can make them as big, as small, as many as you want. I'm just gonna kind of place mine around the center here to make sure I'm getting enough petals. You can make them look like a plant you've seen before. You can make them look like a plant you see in your mind. You can be as creative as you want to be. There's no mistakes here, just your own vision. So mine actually looks pretty good with four petals. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those down. So that's what mine looks like. While you're at the library adopting a plant and getting craft supplies, you can also get this Estuary Salinity Kids page. This is full of a lot of information that's great to know. Some of it you might have learned today. On the back, we have a couple of fun games and how to make your own salt crystals. Thank you for joining us for this From Shelves to the Shores lesson. 
Feel free to contact us with any questions you have or to share pictures of you doing our experiment or craft. You can also check out our website or join us on Instagram or Facebook to learn more about what CBA is doing for the Bay. Until next time, keep exploring.